In this video I'll show you how to make a bubble wrap material. So let's start. I'll be using a new editor and displacement node for adding and deforming geometry. I start to build the height map by using tile node. Arrange it node and it will be our main generator for height map. Solo it, pick the circles pattern because it's more like a bubble wrap, maybe circle two or three. We see how they oriented into hex pattern. For displacement, I will create a black and white gradient. So some of them pure white, some gray, some almost white for creating variety in extrusion of displacement. I will change the black level to 50 because I don't want to have inner displacement bubble wrap is only going outside not inner checking our dark color it should be valued higher than 50 maybe 60 great connecting to displacement input texture map in a res shade attack i'm using the geometry of right with default settings right now and displacement is set to 10 in maximum and displacement scale and solo and we immediately see this bubble wrapping surface but we have uh, nuances the caps are flat we don't see this bubble getting out of surface yes we have randomness in height let's check the pattern and maybe we can play with bevel to smooth these caps updates yeah looks much better but we have some limiting let me set bevel width to one and something strange and weird is happening we still have some problems with geometry some caps limiting so at first look and from the far camera view everything looks to be okay but in close-up we see a weird result let's try bevel to zero and that's not the result we're waiting for something like selling despite we set pattern to circle so not the great thing that we were trying to achieve that's why we need to build our own texture create a new scene going to output and set to square for the texture output 2048 create a plane then we need to build a sphere clone it change from grid to i think something like honeycomb arrange and tweak its position so they will be closer to each other now we need to create a camera in top view so i in top view clicking on rs camera deleting the tag we don't need this and be sure that our projection is top we don't need any perspective deformation or distortion and now we need to position our camera to build a seamless pattern zoom out plane press s to focus on it the main challenge as i said is to make the tiling pattern that's why we need to orient and set up cloner to have seamless repetitive on the edge now we don't have this type of tiling so we need to do some tweaks now we need to go to cloner and find the count height and width height that will produce the seamless tiling let's start from one and then upping to two or to three and now you see that at the top at the bottom we have the similar vertical repetitive position of our sphere to set perfect position i hit nb to display the wireframe now we see the center of our shapes and we can decrease to have better observing how we match the position of our camera and center of geometry playing with zoom we can move our camera closely so the anchor points meet the edges of our frame then we can go to cloner and playing with height to position our spheres 
perfectly in the corners of the end of our frame. You can tweak and pick the another scale of elements or making another pattern, but now I will increase the segments and I think this will be okay. Create a new shader, but we don't need a rest shader. I will switch from redshift to standard material and create a new material. Replace and apply directly to our cloner and play. Alt and R for preview. Going to material and enabling only luminous channel. Going to texture and lower gradient shader. We can play with gradient, but we need to change it to 3D linear. This type builds a gradient from point that is positioned with start coordinates and end. First point minus 100 in X and another plus 100 in X. We set it to zero and we need to have a vertical gradient. To enable this, going to gradient and set end point to something like 90. And immediately we see how it change. Now we need to play with value. 50 for the ground level, because we need only our displacement, not inside the geometry. Changing to cubic BS or maybe to linear to have a smooth gradient on our spheres from gray to white. Looks good. Now we need to output our texture. Be sure that is tiling. Going to render settings and I render as PRG file so texture dot and pick the format i will set to 16 bit color depth without alpha we need to render this texture out shift r or hitting this render button and we see some problems with play so we need to expand it technically our texture is ready but one more thing i want to add is a little bit of random in height of our spheres because now it's very regular pattern and to do this we need to add a random effector directly to our cloner but before i will increase the quantity of our cloner dividing size by two because everything is preset up and perfectly tiled going to increase the count value be sure that it matches our frame and spheres i will divide by two the radius now we have a lot of spheres and we can add a random effector to it. In random effector we will set maximum to zero because we don't need to create the bigger spheres, only the smaller one. Decreasing the position, maybe adding just a bit in Y, maybe more. Yeah, and now we have some variation in height of our bubbles. But for keeping tiling, we need to limit our random effect only to the center one. That's why we create a box field for it and extend so that it doesn't affect the side elements. Render it out, what we got and now what we get. Interesting bubbling effect. We decreased the scale of our spheres, that's why we need to go to our gradient and decrease the white point. We had a 90 in Y, but now radius in 45, so going to gradient and set end point to 45. Now the point of white will be perfectly at the top. If we decrease to 40, we will see the cutting of gradient. If value will be bigger, we will lose the point of white at the top of our spheres. So let's go back to 45. Let's render this out, replace the texture and we can combine with all previous tests. So no tiling, a poor variation, almost no variation. Yeah, we have some gradient and overall result with point of white, point of gray should work exactly as we would. We can close and load this texture to our shader. Since the texture is already with Cinema 4D in the same folder, we can only type its name and it will load automatically. Connect texture to displacement instead of tiles, refresh the IPR and we have this 
smooth ballooning effect. The base setup is ready. Now we need to play with settings. For example, I decreased minimum edge length to something like 2 or maybe 0. And we have more smooth edge between bubble and regular surface. Here we still have some problems here, but I think it's okay. We can try to blur our texture. For example, in advanced, set me base to 32. Too much, maybe something like 2. And the result is much cleaner. Also, we can try to up my BS something like 4, and sometimes this workaround help, but you know, the displacement is not the perfect technology that provides clean result. If we can compare to uh, modeling of these bubbles directly on geometry level. When we got a good result, we can increase the strength of displacement scale, and don't forget to increase maximum displacement scale too. So we don't have this limiting of the shape. Now, perfect bubbles is here. Go into camera, looks very good, much better than tiles, and we can improve our shader more. First is going to use this texture to drive the roughness, because I want to bubble be more glossiness and less rough. That's why we can use a ramp node as adapter connect texture to general input, alt input, and then solo this thing, invert the gradient, because the black should be on our bubbles, and maybe up a bit, because we don't need pure roughness and pure glossiness surface. Something like semi-gray and semi-white. Checking. Now we see how it works, less roughness on the bubble. The great thing that now we can separate reflection from roughness, you can lower the IOR parameter and create another type of surface, or you can up it and find and tweak it as you want. Also, you can enable thin world option to have less noticeable effect, very transparent, but we don't need this in our case. We continue to improve our shader. We have our texture and we can add a maximum noise that will be adding more details. Let me connect it to displacement. And we have this small distortion because bubble wrap is not very regular. So we will multiply our texture and our max and noise to zone the effect of max and noise in displacement because we don't need to have this displacement everywhere. I want to limit it to special zones, for example, in bubbles. So multiply vector looks good, but I will try to use a color layer and make a more accurate blending. The base shape, the max and noise, deleting this multiply, change blending mode to multiply, the same effect, but we add one more ramp, connect it to the mask of our max and noise and our texture as an input for our ramp. Now we can create and zone out where our max and noise will be added. Tweaking the adjustment, the white zones would be the mask where max and noise will be generated. Unsolo the mask and check the color layer. Connect it to displacement, unsolo waiting for IPR to update, and now we see the deformation exactly on a bubble. Now we need to tweak it a bit, maybe not so contrast between black and white color, 
we can decrease the higher value and up the lower value because we need a smooth deformation not so aggressive one the next tweak is going to make some noise solo it to see exactly what we're doing and input section increase the overall scale maybe not so much we need a really smooth additional effect and solo shaking yeah much more organic also we can use this mask to control the zonal roughness texture and mix with them now i am not doing this in the ramp for roughness i add a little bit value to have more rough base and bubble tones the shading is ready and we can try to load and another shape and check how it would be applied in base meshes i will pick maybe a dinosaur uh, yes double click arrange it to our composition to match the frame move shader and the rest tag to our new model deleting material waiting for update looks good we need to play with tiling selecting shader and increase tiling to 10 by 10 looks terrific maybe more waiting for update maybe decreasing the maximum subdivision for this mesh and maybe a lower displacement scale maybe a lower a bit now we have bubble wrap dinosaur in no time just because we made a good procedural and tiling shader move it up to see maybe in different angle like this works perfectly i'm really happy with the result let's try with another model i think battle should be okay or base here we have some something like bottle deleting its original material place it to our scene rotate checking the structure to know what subdivision we will be using in our area shader move all our materials and works again that's great that's great maybe we can change the projection to cubic it's hard to see in IPR. Let me increase the bottle. Going to tiling and maybe decrease tiling. Yes, beautiful. We have this bubble wrap bottle in no time. Playing with displacement scale to find the value. 15 is too much, maybe 10. The great thing in our workflow is that we have the base texture that drives all deformation so if you want to change the texture you will get another part i started the bucket rendering to see in 100 percent quality the result of our doings and i'm really happy with it hope you too so see you next time thank you for your attention